Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julie McNeil Crafts. So once again I'm late to my own party and I've not yet shared the Blooming Bell collection here on YouTube. So I will just show you that now but no doubt if you follow Dawn and Jenny and Dawn, I've got two Dawns now, um, you will have seen it. So here it is. So I've already done something with Bonnie. So not my favourite page to be honest, but I'm not used to working on burlap. So that is something I'm going to have to work on to improve my skills of working on burlap. But this is Bonnie and I did this in a live um, on Facebook um, on Monday. So that's her. So I'll just pop her out the way just now. Then we also have... Brittany. We also have Becca and Belinda. So those are the four ladies. Then we've got these sentiments. I've cut one sentiment out so I'll, I'll pull my <laughs> book back in. We've also got these accessories um, and then we've got the sentiments. All the flowers of the tomorrows are the seeds of today. Happiness blooms from within bloom where you're planted and mother nature has the best box of crayons spring is a lovely reminder of how beautiful change can truly be and if i pull back my page let's hope i find it quickly now <laughs> there we go we've got um through sun and rain you will bloom all the same as the last one so today i've decided i am going to make myself a little art journal ready for 2021 sorry about the glare on that so i made this one using some collage elements for from elena zinski art on the crafting together with the all brands facebook group and i've just used some collage papers that i've made jelly prints and stuff like that and then we just made a front and a back and i did it out of these covers here um but i did that as a giveaway so that is going to lovely clear portrait and i thought you know what i quite fancy one myself um for 2021 and i quite fancy using one of my own girls i think she rocks so i might do her but we'll just have a little see and i thought yeah i always seem to do journaling with my brand new releases um so these are so why not have a dedicated journal right these are backing papers that i have made um, using various GMC stuff. So I might just have a quick flick through this. Okay. So I have found this piece which I did using, I think, by the looks of it, Medina Weekly Gloss Sprays and the Big Large Cog Stencil and the Electric Spiral Stencil. And then afterwards, at the end, I have gone over it with a palette knife and the um, Pretty Gets Gritty Crackle Gel. So it's shining a little bit in the camera, but we'll see how, how we go. But I think that's quite nice and bright and it suits um, our Becca, who is just here. So we will see how we go. Let's just kind of get this in. I think I'm just going to go right um, for um, plonking it in the middle. I'm not got worried about this bit here. Um, to be honest, it's by the time I've got paper on both sides, you're not really going to notice what I think is really cool about this is I much prefer, uh, well I like, I've kind of got to know my other, get to know my other journals as well. But one of the frustrations I have with journals is they get quite fat and bulky and I'm always really aware of not overdoing 3D elements and stuff like that. And when I create I quite like to just go with the flow and <laughs> see how the mood takes me. But with a deconstructed journal it doesn't really matter. Um, you can put on as much as you want because um, you can... Um, because it holds together with rings. One of my favourite journals is my Junk and Disorderly journal, which actually is getting quite full now, so I might just sort of go through that at some point and do the missing pages. Um, you know where I've done a journal page on one side but not the other, and then get that one and call that one done. Um, but it's really easy to make your own sort of um, deconstructed journal like that. Um, that one there, um, it was chipboard it had a chipboard backing and it had um, just bits of paper and to be honest 
when I first started, I, I didn't really think about doing it yourself. So I bought a couple of refills before I suddenly realised, do you know what? I could just cut down any sheet of paper to 8 by 8 and put the holes in. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why it took me so long to come to that conclusion, but yeah, it did take me a while. Um, so once you realise that, you can actually just make a journal out of everything. And what's nice about a deconstructed journal is there's no set amount of pages. So as I said, I might just make this my journal for 2021. And if by the end of 2021 there's six pages in it, then that's fine. If there's a, hundreds of them, that's fine too. I can just, it can be as big or as small as you want to make it. And I just thought, actually, I really like this size. It's quite an unusual size um, for a journal page. Um, and then if you were to do a double page spread it would kind of almost be a square as well and not an overwhelming size square it would probably be 8 by 8 so ish just going by eye there um, so I think this it could be quite a nice idea I'm just so sorry it's reflecting into the camera a little bit hopefully by the time we knock it back with a bit of gesso or something um, it'll not be quite so shiny Oh, it, you know, it feels so good to be crafting. I know you, if you follow my channel, um, you'll be aware that um, I'm sort of in a temporary abode in my spare room and some of my craft stuff was still in the loft. And to be honest, everything was just doing my head in a little bit because the loft has now become almost like the shop. Um, so all the stock's up there and that's where I pack my orders and stuff. And that was kind of disorganised and not working as well as it should. And we've got a big show coming up in February. So I was wanting that working really well, so I was like, do you know what, I'm just bringing all the stuff down. So I've like, spent the last two days trying to get a loft's worth of stuff into a little room. Um, it's all in, um, it's not kind of the best way designed, like I managed to get it all in, it all looks really relatively neat. Um, but I know that it's going to drive me insane at some point because I'll be like having to climb, you know, I'll be wanting something that's in the, right at the bottom box. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's fine. Um, Alistair's working on my studio, so hopefully um, that'll be done in the next couple of months. Obviously, with various lockdowns and things, and there might be delays, because we need, like, although he can do the electrics, I think the fact that we're wanting to put electrics where they are, it all needs signed off by somebody that knows what they're doing, um, or somebody that's qualified to sign it off, sort of thing. But, um, yeah, so I've literally spent two days... Um, I like how bright this is, but um, partly it's reflecting in the camera and I don't want it to. <laughs> and partly um, it, knocking it back a little bit will emphasise some of the crackle that's on there. So we will start to see that a little bit more. Um, and also because I'm a lovely um, Becca that I fancy using on the front is nice and bright. Um, I feel I just need to, to knock it back a little bit. Um, but this is one of the fun things um, about making backing papers. All of a sudden you've got something that's sort of, it would have taken time to start layering and stenciling. And, and I think like when you're doing backing papers as well, it's a great thing for, you know when you you want to create, um, but you're, maybe your mojo's missing, or you just don't know what, quite where you want to be, what you want to do. Just making backgrounds where there's no thought into it, you're just sort of, spraying um actually i think i made these in a live on crafting together with all brands and it was the day that i was just about to go live and then the cat brought a mouse in the house and i was literally running around the house trying to catch this mouse rescue it from the cat then take it somewhere safe where she couldn't catch it again and so I ended up being a few minutes late in the live and I wasn't overly prepped and I was just like oh what am I going to do and I just sat and made backgrounds because like I was sort of like a bit oh. <laughs> and I wasn't in the frame of mind creating especially like publicly and live so yeah it was like get some stencils out get some sprays out get some products out and um, just see um, what happens so that's just I always find a bit of white gesso really brings everything together and as strange as it might seem adding white and a contrast um, to the bright colours actually makes the bright look brighter so I am going to find another piece of jelly printing that's similar colourways 
and do the exact same so that I have my back cover as well but I'll come back once okay, I've so done there's that. there's the piece I have created for the back so I'll just pop that to the side and I've also fussy cut I am back out while I was off at camera so you didn't have to watch me do that. So I am thinking that I maybe need some washi. Um, yeah, let's get some washi on there. I was going to get some of my papers, but they're over the other side of the room. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll see how we go with this for just now. I might grab my papers at some point. Um, but I'm just going to go with the flow. I do love this washi. Okay, I kind of want to create something to stand our Becca on so that she's not floating in midair. So, um, the washi is a good way of doing that. Now I've done that, I also think I might bring in some black stamping. This is kind of what I was saying earlier as well, that when you're working with bright colours, if you can actually get white and black into your piece as well, um, it works really well because you will find the black and the white or will make your colours really, really pop an awful lot more. So just got a bit up there and we'll pop a bit down here. I may end up just popping a little bit of gel medium over these to make sure they stay stuck because it is washy and it can lift. Um, but it should be alright. I seem to end up with my numbers upside down but you know I'm actually alright with that. That's okay. Right. Oops, step the excess away. So we have got that. Um, so yeah, I think I'll stick her down. Do a bit, uh, oh no, I think I'll do a bit of stamping actually. Let me grab one of my stamp Mentals stamp kits. Um, let me see. Um, I'll use the original actually. We'll just get a little bit of black stamping going on with this as well. So I'm going to grab my Verso Fine Clear. I might actually get a new one. I mean, you can't tell, um, but after a while they start to lose their juiciness just a little bit. I'm not bothering putting it on a block. Just so. Um, so it still stamps really black, but a brand new one stamps blacker. Um, so, and you do notice a difference with certain techniques. But I've noticed that a lot of people that craft with VersaFine Clear actually have it and put their dates on the back so that they can see the difference between um, oldest and newest. <laughs> so, um, but it's, yeah, it's still fairly black at the minute, so we're okay. I'm just going to, since we brought the black in with the washi, let's get a bit, a bit more in. And as I said, I don't tend to use these stamps as a whole. They're just nice for adding extra bits here and there, just to build up the pattern a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to grab my black pen and we will just edge around. I may pull in some black. Actually, I don't know whether I should have inked that first. If we do, it'll just maybe pull the black in a little bit. Although it shouldn't, because it's permanent, so if we give it a little second to settle, that should be fine. I'm gonna pop that down, because I'm thinking that maybe if we get a distress ink. I should have done that first before putting the black line on but hey ho, sometimes this is when you discover new effects. <laughs> I'm just going to darken the edge. Oh yeah, look at that yellow pop. It's fabulous. So it has gone over because the VersaFine Clear you do need to allow it to set a minute or two. You do need to give it a minute drying time. I quite often just maybe heat set it um, but it's kind of blending in but that's okay. I can live with that. Okay, that's looking quite good. 
So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab Becca and um, bring that ink over the white parts of the image because the main base of the background that she's going on is yellow. This will allow it to blend right into the background and I'm not we're not going to see that white those white sections. Um, it, each to their own. Some people love the white parts. Um, I'm not, it's not really my thing. Um, so I used to always fussy cut right to the edge. Um, but with my girls I can't because I add all these extra twiddly bits in. Um, so they're still easy to cut but you do have to sort of, um, I tend to find that I need to leave the white edge. Um, but this is how I get around that. So now, um, that's not affected the colouring overly, but now you find that she blends into the page lovely. I don't really notice the difference. So I am going to stick her down and then I'm going to grab a pencil and we will do our shadowing. So let me just get some, I'm going for gel medium rather than my normal PVA glue, just purely, and this is the front cover of my journal page. So it is going to probably get quite a lot of abuse in all honesty. Um, <laughs> so I want to make sure it's really well stuck down. So I'm going for lots of gel medium. I really need to order some more because I'm running out. Because I use it so much. <laughs> oh, it feels so nice to be crafting. See, after I think I think cleaning your craft space is some form of torture. It takes forever. And the trouble is, as you're doing it, you're discovering things that you forgot you had, that you squirreled away with some amazing idea that you've never got wrenched in. I've not ended up putting that up. <laughs> ended up going too, too low. She's not grounded anymore. That's okay. I'm going to put a bit more tape down and then I will, will that'll get sorted with the shadowing. Yeah, so you, you end up surrounded by all this stuff that is totally feeding your creativity is making you just want to create because you're like oh wow I could do that with this I've got so many ideas buzzing around in my head right now but your craft room is completely it, not usable <laughs> because it's a complete and utter midden yeah so um, it's quite nice to finally be done and finally be crafting it just it feels such a lovely lovely relief after two days of um, yeah, two days of sorting, sorting and organising lovely craft stuff. And I'm trying my best um, not to cause too much devastation as I craft just now. But I'm just off to grab my Inktense pencil. So I have got Saddle Brown and Sun Yellow. We'll see how we get on. Um, and what I'm just going to do is... Um, colour it round the edges and I always find this really really does make a difference. I know I go on about it a lot so if you're just if you're a regular to my channel thank you for still following me and putting up with my waffle <laughs> uh, but just in case you're new I am going to go over it again. Now we may struggle a little bit because we've got that crackle gel we're working on a more yeah Right, so sometimes this happens. So right now, um, it's taking the, on the paper, but the backing paper, it's not taking. And that's because we've gone over it with that crackle gel. So now we're working on a shiny surface. Um, and although the ink tense is an ink, it's not enough to sort of stay put. So our work around that is the best thing ever, ever invented. And that is gesso and clear gesso at that. So what I'm going to do is let's get some clear gesso all over this um, and it will just unify everything because we're probably going to have issues over the washi as well. So I'm just going to get this all over. While I was off camera by the way I chopped off the um, I chopped off the flower that was on the end of there and I stuck it up there for some reason. It seemed to it seemed to work at the time. I'm just watching her face a little bit. 
nothing should move too much the um yellow the yellow distress ink might a little so i'm just going to be aware of how i do this so i'm just putting this all over and as i said if you ever sort of end up with this sort of predicament the um a clear gesso is your best friend um, and that's purely I just didn't think. I'm so used to sort of doing my normal routine of getting my shadowing done and, and you're like, oh, that's not going to work. Um, but there are always workarounds. So I'm just going to sort of gather near the edges of that. I apologise if there was a funny edit there. My camera ran out of battery. So I changed the battery and while I was off camera, I've sort of um, put, brought the back to the same stage as the front. So it's got this um, black edging and a bit of black stamping on it. Um, what else? I did that whilst I was allowing this to dry, although I have just sort of finished that with a heat gun, which is why we're getting a bit of bendage. But we're all right. It's all right. So let's see. Yeah, how we get on now. So we will add a little bit of the pencil. So for those of you that are new to my channel, um, I do this technique a lot and it really does, look how much, how different that is and how well that is taken, that colour is now taken to the background. It just, it pretty much wiped, wiped off before. And that is the wonder of clear gesso. Um, yeah, anyway, what was it? Anything, like even as I'm working, you can see, you can see the shadow. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the brush on my work just there. So anything in life, if there's something in front of it, there will be a shadow. And just remembering that simple fact, I mean, we don't have to go into complicated like theory and all of that sort of stuff. But just remembering that simple fact of putting a shadow behind what is in your foreground, it really helps the main image or the main part that you want to stand out to stand out. And um, it also helps to give a really 3D element um, to your work. So I really enjoy adding shadowing um, to my work. Um, um, and I do think it is worth it and I think it makes a huge difference to your finished product. Um, I like to use ink tents. I like to use ink tents because it has the manoeuvrability of a watercolour. So as I put it down now, it's pretty much working the same as a watercolour. I'm activating it with water, I'm able to pull it out and I find that gives me a lot more control. You can do this sort of technique with like a HB pencil or something like that and I always find I'm a bit too heavy handed whereas I find this just helps me to build up nice and gradually. The really cool thing about ink tense pencils is once because they're an ink once they're dry they are permanent so you can then start to layer and layer and layer on these and the the underneath layer will not move so it's not like a like a watercolor that when you start to work on top of it and um, you risk moving what goes on underneath you don't get that with your ink tents and um, once it's dry that's it permanent and then it means you can really build it up hence the name so you can get a really intense color and um, so ink tents is a very good name for this product the only thing about this process is it does take a little bit of time um, and I am aware that that might be a bit boring, um, especially if you're used to seeing me doing it all the time. Um, so what I am going to do right now is um, pop you on speed up and come back once we have done that part. shadowing we're getting there and I've pulled out these little chipboard pieces um, with 2021 
So I think I'm going to pop them down there like that. But before I put them on, I'm just going to back both of these. I'll just do the one and I'll do the other off camera. Um, just because it will be easier to do that whilst it's flat as opposed to, you know, once I put the chipboard on, I'm going to have an uneven surface to work on, which um, it's doable, but you know, it's easier if you remember about these things before, <laughs> beforehand. So I've taken some paper out of the Painted Funky um, paper pad. So I am just going to do the same as I did before. We're going to put lots of gel medium around this. And I will stick that down. As I said, I'll just do the one the front cover with you. I'll do the other cover off camera, just so that this video is not too repetitive for you. So we'll just pop that down there. And then I'm just going to do this. Now, the last time I was working with fairly thick card, um, this is a, a paper as opposed to a card. Um, so if you grab your bone folder and sort of push up and pull back down almost like you would when you are wallpapering and the idea is that this way we get rid of all those air bubbles and then we're less likely to get wrinkles and little lumps in our work so um, but because I was um the card that went on the front was a 280 GSM so I um, I wouldn't have got this I wouldn't have had the same problems with that as I may get with the paper, whereas the paper is a 160. So um, if you are doing something like that, it's a good wee tip to remember. So I'm just going to cut around exactly the same as we did before. And now, who would have ever thought um, that this was just a bit of leftover packaging? So if you have never art journaled before, why not give it a try during 2020? Yes, there are some amazing out journals out there. I have some. I have spent my hard-on cash on some of these more expensive journals. But you really don't need it. This is a piece of packaging and essentially it's scrap paper. I mean, I made that background on scrap paper. So you don't need a lot to get started. Don't be put off. I think sometimes when we see all the mediums that are out there and all the types of journals and all this and all that, we can kind of get a bit overwhelmed and feel that we need it all. You really don't. <laughs> um, you know, just work with what you have. Right, I am going to grab the yellow ink again, as soon as we've gone for yellow covers. I'm just a bit concerned I'm going to end up with yellow in her face. So let me adjust. What I'm going to do is I've got some <laughs> I've got some other scraps of paper here which I think are going to become pages inside this journal. I may chop them down and pop them in but I'm just going to clean off this yellow. So I don't want to waste that lovely ink. It's just that I don't want that yellow ink to end up on her face and completely ruin it. So let's just, this. I always do this with my inks. This is how I clean up. I either create a new backing page or I stick it in my journal or something like that. I would never actually ever waste it. We spend our hard earned money on these inks and things. We don't want to be leaving half of it behind. Okay, I'll just get that a little dry. And now I know that I'm, it's just that, as I said, I don't want to end, end up with her having a, a yellow beauty spot or something right in the middle of her face. That could have been unfortunate. So I'm going to pull the yellow in. This is going to tie it into the front cover and make it look really good. But to be honest, this paper has loads of colours and it's nice and bright, which is why I chose it as well. So it's going to work. Um, and as I said, I've chosen similar things for both the front and back. You don't have to, but I just thought that maybe made it look a bit more cohesive. But it honestly depends on you and what you want to do. So we've brought that in. And then, of course, we will need, or I will need. <laughs> I personally feel it's an essential, but, you know, we each have our own styles. <laughs> and I'm just going to get my black pen and edge edge that. Let's go all the way around like so. And actually just the way I've cut that it's a little bit rough. Um, that's okay. 
what I tend to do is work with it and make it look deliberate. So I'm going to pull my ink pad in and just sort of rough up the insides and then if we've completely disguised the fact that um, the cut work isn't brilliant. So there's always a work round. My daughter says there's no such things as, as mistakes in art, only sparkly surprises. So there we go. So that's me done that. So I am just going to do the same for the back and then I'll be back. <laughs> I'm just going to grab my little chipboard pieces and I am just going to pop them down the side. I think I like it. I have fiddled around in different places and this is kind of where I like it the most. There is these really annoying pips on them though. So I am going to have to sort of deal with those. Um, probably better with a sanding block um, of some description actually for this, but I'm sort of managing. So we're okay. I'm trying to decide if I want them white or whether I want them, but it does make them pop off the page. So I'm, I'm going to go for white. I have contemplated sort of <laughs> making them black or something like that, painting over them, but I think I'm going to stick with them being white um, and then hopefully once I put um, some white splashes down as well, that, that will just help it look right. So let's get those stuck down. So again I'm using my gel medium and the um, reason being is gel medium literally will stick anything to anything. You don't have to worry about it squidging out. You can be generous, you don't have to worry about it squidging out the side because it does dry clear. So you'll be absolutely fine. So let's um, get, get all of that on and stuck down like so. That. And also, whilst that's drying, I'm just going to have a, a quick rummage through my bit box to see if any extra embellishments would work. But I will do that off camera. <laughs> okay, so I have found a few bits and pieces. I do seem to quite, quite like quite a heavily collaged <laughs> look. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to go for it. Especially with it being the front cover. Um, it wouldn't be me unless it was kind of absolutely mad. Now, I've only got the one cloud. And I could, you know, go and stamp one and cut it out, but I really can't be bothered. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that there. And then we will have this one somewhere else sort of popping in. I'll just pop it down there. Well, why not? Okay. Um, also, my latest thing that I do quite like is to have some form of dangles. <laughs> So I've got these little orange buttons that go quite well. So we'll just we'll pop one there. And then we will pop oops one just here. Like so um I've got my little mechanical bumblebee and I do love bumblebees because for me they represent that the impossible is possible so I do quite like to have because their little bodies are too fat and their wings are too small so they shouldn't be able to fly and yet they do they fly beautifully and they do a wonderful job of it so um yeah <laughs> I don't know if you heard that that's my husband sneezing through in the other room <laughs> don't know if that'll be picked up on camera or not Right, so, and then I've just got a few different florals, um, we've got, oops, and we've got our little snail, and just here, and a few different flowers, and we'll just build up, I just, as I said, I do quite like just having a corner that's really heavily embellished, just getting a bit more gel medium down there, as I said, this is the front cover and I'm just aware that it's going to take a lot of abuse so it's better to put too much on than too little 
and um, I yeah even if it squidges out the side it doesn't matter because it will all dry clear so we're all good right going to just stick a whole load of that on there and the other thing with it being a gel medium it does have a little bit of wiggle room so especially as I'm building up a collage I kind of want sort of flowers sort of going over and under and um, I've just got that movement that I can just sort of pick something up a little bit and uh, tuck it underneath so that's quite a nice medium to work with for that reason and I'm working with different weights here because I've stamped them onto various different cards so it's all good like here I'm just going to tuck it underneath the snail a little bit okay Oops. I need to get some more behind her beautiful eyes she's got going on there so I've got a little Becca with a little snail friend snails with squint so I'm just manoeuvre that a little bit and as I said this is what's fabulous about gel medium is you do have that wiggle room but then once it's stuck it's stuck that's it forever right so just putting a bit of pressure on that I'm just going to grab my black pen for some doodles then we'll have some white splashes and then all that remains is to put the whole thing together my Jane and Davenport Pens. these things are amazing they will literally write over anything so I'm just going to do a doodly fake stitched border I mean this is going over crackle gel and all sorts nothing phases it it's amazing stuff I love these pens so much okay and then we'll come around like so now what I will do is add this um, stitching border to um, the back as well. At some point I may decorate the back. I may sort of have a look through. My bit box is actually quite empty at the minute. I may have a look through my bit box and see what randomness is there to sort of collage something together. But for today the focus is just on the front. I'm going to turn these into proper little dangles by just doing that and adding some little squiggles and we'll doodle a few little circles yeah and I think that is us so I just need to grab some scrap paper which you know isn't lying about because I've tidied my room <laughs> typical right so I'm just going to kind of cover her face not too wide right all of her not showing and maybe we'll get a little bit over a little Sneely's face as well and I'm just going to get my um, this stuff <laughs> Dela Rowney Artists Inc and we're just going to do some splatters and then whilst those splatters dry I'm going to grab some book rings so I mentioned about making this yourself out of packaging I bought a packet of 50 book rings um, multi-sized and I think it cost me about four pound <laughs> so even if you have to go out and purchase book rings to do something like this um, you're not talking a lot of pennies to get yourself um, started journaling I have to say when I used to look at art journals I kind of thought what was the point because <laughs> I was so used to making cards and there being a purpose to creating um, but it's so much more freeing just creating for creating's sake um, and I have to say I absolutely love my journaling now it's probably my favourite thing that I go to the most so and there we go I'm actually just going to be a little bit put a bit more on sometimes I find this once you lift it if the card that you were using was just a bit too big it's almost like the the space without the splatters is too big I'm severely running out of brushes it's ridiculous um, it's because I've had a load in the bathroom for the other day still to wash and I've gone through quite a lot to do because I keep sticking them in gel medium and of course as soon as you stick it oops as soon as you stick it in gel medium it needs to go in water 
or you will have multiple sticks. Okay, I've got a nice big white blob there, which let's do something about that because it's kind of completely in the wrong place. So, yep, what I'm going to do is from some of my backing papers that I have a stash of, I'm going to cut them down to size of this book. I'm going to grab my book rings and then we'll literally just assemble the book together. Okay, Happy's just come with a brew, so that's just lovely. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so this is how the journal's looking so far. I'm going to start off with these cute little book rings and they're just gorgeous and I love the fact they're yellow and I think it goes really well. But, as I said, I, I bought a big multi-pack. So if by some miracle I do hundreds and hundreds of pages and those just aren't going to hold all the pages, you know, we can just swap them out for a bigger book ring. So this is what, I love the idea of this. As I said, my favourite journal so far, in fact it's just a hand, has been this one, my junk and disorderly one. And I mean it's really fat now but I've had it for a good few years, that's what I'm saying. I think I'm going to be calling it finished at some point. But I love, I've got pages to put in, <laughs> but I love the fact that you can like take a page out, work on it and um, put it in. Um, so yeah, I might have to come in and do pages like that to sort of um, finish it off. But I love this journal and one of the reasons that I love it is that, you know, I can take the page out that I'm working on and then put it back up. And then that's all, that's definitely been my favourite way to work. So when I realised how easily I could do that myself rather than, you know, buy a kit to do it, just have to be done, really. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take my front page because I don't do measuring. And I'm going to approximately measure where I think it looks good. So I think it would look quite good above this flower. So I'll punch that out. So that is that has gone through the packaging, the 280 GSM and the 160 GSM. So it's gone through a fair amount. And then, so roughly that from there is about near that splodge. I need to make sure that I get the width about right as well. I'm just going to actually mark it because I'm in love with this journal and I don't want to ruin it at this stage. So it's about, it's still not measuring, it's just to make sure that I get it roughly that far. So there to there is about there and it was, it should just be catching her hair I think when I punch it. So about there. Do that. Okay. There we go. As I said, if it's not 100% even, it really doesn't matter. Right, so that's that. Then once I have done that, I am just going to... So what I've done is these are various... That's been done with Distress Inks when I was just testing out my stencils when they just arrived. I've got some... That's more stenciling. That's spraying that's spraying, that's just, yeah. So, like quite often, if we do make backgrounds and things, this is a great way to use them. Sometimes we can spend ages making backgrounds and then never actually get around to using them. So again, no measuring, I'm just literally gonna draw through it as a template just there. Okay. And I, so if you don't have a crocodile, ordinary punch, um, long arms, um, arm stapler, you could staple it together um, but then you don't have the ability to sort of go in and out as it were, like take your pages in and out. Um, or even just like using an owl or like a pokey tool or you know, there's ways and means. There's ways and means of making it work. Okay, so we have that and then I'm just going to get my, so the back cover I haven't decorated yet, I mean, we could, I might decorate it when I fancy decorating it, or I might sort of do it at, on the last day of 21 or something, I might just sort of end of 21, decorate the back cover. Okay, so again, just drawing, because obviously you need to match the holes 
once you first, when you first put them in, it doesn't really matter. But um, after that, you need to obviously match it so the book aligns. Um, but yeah, I think we're all good to go. So, as I said, I'm going to start off with these cute yellow ones because I think they are just adorable. But depending on how addicted I become to this journal. See, this is the thing. If in 2021 I only do three or four pages, that's absolutely fine. That will be my record for 2021. If I happen to journal in it every single day and I have 165 pages in there, that's cool too. We just move on to a bigger room. So it is really fabulous. Right, so, and then probably once I've finished it, um, I would tie, like, um, ribbons and maybe shrink plastic charms or charms or anything like that onto the rings. But to be honest, I would do that at the end. I will do that with my junk and disorderly when I eventually finish it, because um, it looks really pretty. Um, but it sort of gets in the way when you're trying to take your pages in and out, and I'm quite... <laughs> Quite practical when it comes to stuff like that. It's the same, like this is why it was, it's quite exciting because I've put chipboard on there, whereas normally I would never put that on a front cover to start off with because working on a bumpy surface is a pain. Right, I'm just going to clear my desk. So, there is my a journal using a Becca Bloom already for 2021. So, ready to use on Friday. And yeah, that is it so far. And um, these pages may stay in, they may go out, who knows. But yeah, I'm looking forward to using it. And thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell because um, it helps you know when... Um, I upload a video and also all the likes and comments and stuff. It's good for the algorithm and whatnot. It helps people know I'm here. <laughs> so thank you for your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, I will be back with you very soon. Until then, take care of you and I'll be back soon. Bye.